they must be really on to me because I've only got five hours to record this thing. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Christina, aka That Variety Nerd. Today we're doing a bit of a different video than what we would normally do. As the title says, we're going to be looking at Peacock a little bit more in depth, what exactly it is, and how it all sort of relates to the realm of professional wrestling. And so they transitioned over to Peacock on March 18th, which was Thursday. So if you're looking at my very initial reactions of the limited ads and how they impact, you know, at least the current day programming and so forth, uh, feel free to take a look at my NXT UK reaction video because I think it's quite clear how I was dealing with those limited ads. But the main reason I say that I only have five hours to record this, it's not because I'm going anywhere because, like, it's 2021. It's, it's not just because of, you know, the whole global crisis that we're all in. It's mainly because of the fact that, well, uh, I got this delightful email from the WWE Network while I was at the grocery store at 5.42 p.m. that pretty much is like, hey, your subscription expires tomorrow and you won't have access to the WWE Network as of tomorrow. I thought we weren't getting fully booted off here in the States until April 4th. Come on. Really? So this is one of these rare times where the sweet, sweet, chocolatey goodness of professional wrestling and WWE mixes in with my peanut butter. And by my peanut butter, I mean like, you know, my background with, you know, media, journalism, media industries, media platforms, and that sort of thing. This sort of opportunity doesn't come around that often, so I figured, you know what, I'm a wrestling fan and I happen to just be a total nerd about media and streaming platforms and pop culture, so... Why not? Let's just wing it. Because, I mean, after all, we've got to wing it because we've only got like five hours to record this. Well, now we're at four hours and 50 minutes. So because of the whole time crunch situation, I'm going to do my absolute best to try to, you know, show you all the differences and similarities with the interfaces, the costs, and all that kind of stuff. Just basic things. Maybe how it all connects, a little bit of the history. We've got the whiteboard ready to go as we've debuted already with our NXT UK reaction as well. So without further ado, let us dive into this, shall we? I think so. All right, so you might be wondering if you're not a wrestling fan, what is the WWE Network? Well, it's a network slash streaming platform slash streaming service, particularly for World Wrestling Entertainment. Essentially, it was supposed to be this one-stop shop for anything WWE related, uh, including archival footage, like older pay-per-views, and also originals like documentaries and all that kind of good stuff. Essentially, WWE saw the upward trend in streaming platforms. That was when Netflix was really starting to take off and social media was starting to take off uh, around, you know, the early 2010s. So essentially in 2014, right before WrestleMania 30, they launched the WWE Network right around the same time, actually, back in 2014. It was meant to sort of steer away from, you know, the traditional pay-per-views and pay-per-view buy rates and stuff like that. And the main thing, the main selling point was that good old $9.99 that they were harpering down her butts, like essentially during, you know, Raw and SmackDown and so forth. So, of course, when you get this sort of more niche product, you're not going to get as much exposure to, you know, a wider audience than, you know, if you were to join up with a major partner. So, essentially, what we've got here in 2021 here in the States is good old Peacock. So, you might be wondering, why is WWE partnering up with Peacock here in the States? People were extremely surprised to see WWE partner up with Peacock earlier this year. I was not one of those people. And let me explain why. All right, so here in the States, we've got four major networks. We've got Fox, CBS, ABC, and NBC. Each one of these four major four, the big four of, like, television media, essentially houses, like, a lot of different things, right? So Fox has Fox Sports, FS1, so NBC, NBC Universal. They've got their peanut butter in WWE's chocolate quite a bit. And so, here's sort of the logic that went into partnering up with an NBC affiliated streaming service versus a CBS, versus an ABC, versus a Fox. So with Fox, they've already got, you know, 
they've already got the network deal with SmackDown, and they were doing backstage over at FS1. So Fox technically has an app, but it's very flaky. Like, you have to have some kind of a cable provider, or even, you know, some sort of alternative like Hulu or Sling, just to get access to the streaming app. So there's, like, no straightforward path to joining their streaming service. So that's why WWE didn't go with Fox. And so with CBS, they were already going through a lot of changes. They used to have a streaming platform called CBS All Access, but that transitioned to what we now know and have probably seen plastered everywhere in our ads, on our social feeds, Paramount Plus. The rebrand didn't officially take place until Paramount Plus really swapped over, at least according to Wikipedia at the time of recording this, on March 22nd. 18 days ago on March 4th, 2021. So there was, you know, the remerger of CBS and Viacom. Everything's all underneath, like, just a few, just a few little silos, essentially. But then there's all these trees that are underneath them, right? Uh, Paramount Network, it used to be called Spike, which homed Monday Night Raw for a little bit back in the early to mid-2000s and that sort of thing when it left USA Network the first time around, slash, as far as I know, the only time before going back to it later on in the 2000s. So my assumption is that because of all the changes um, and maybe the lack of structure within CBS, all access to Paramount+, Plus, that might have been possibly a reason why they didn't go with Paramount+. Plus or a CBS affiliated streaming service in that realm. So ABC is the one where it gets very sticky, all right? So it is technically a part of Disney, or at least the Walt Disney Company. There's actually a whole image online that sort of surfaces just what Disney owns. It's kind of ridiculous. So essentially, ABC is often affiliated with, through Disney, um, through sports with ESPN. So they've already got enough sports content kind of saturated in there. So there's that. And so that, my friends, is how we got to NBC. Now, NBC is the one where, to me, it was sort of a no-brainer. Well, my friends, let me sort of dive into this a little bit more. Let me explain to you how WWE somehow connected with NBC. All right, so again, traditionally NBC was also sort of the home. Like if you take a look back at the older days of wrestling, like back in the 80s and so forth, you know, with Saturday night's main event, it originates there. However, with the boom of cable television in the 80s and into the 90s, you had a number of television networks that started to pop up. But for the purposes of this video, there are at least three, count them, three networks that WWE has sort of been affiliated with over the past at least nearly three decades almost, I would say, at this point. So I've sort of broken them down by programming and all that stuff. So as you can see with E! Network, which, you know, NBC, NBC Universal owns E! Network, Sci-Fi, which, you know, that was how it used to be stylized back then because that was so cool. And, of course, USA Network. So those are sort of the breakdowns right there. So on E! you had Total Divas, uh, Total Bellas, which is still going. Then, of course, you had the Sci-Fi Network with WWE, CW. Uh, SmackDown was over there for a little bit. And then, of course, the OG NXT, like when it was still a game show. And then on USA Network, you have NXT Mainland <laughs> slash over here in the States. Uh, you have Monday Night Raw, that's been back over here for at least a good 10 years now, arguably. Miz and Mrs., which of course is, you know, the Miz and Maurice's reality show. And some other assorted specials, sometimes they'll do the abbreviated Hall of Fame on there and all that stuff. It was sort of a no-brainer for WWE to go with the one of four major networks that they've, you know, invested, you know, this amount of time and energy, probably money being shared and that sort of thing. They, they built up a rapport with this network for a good 20, 30 plus years, give or take. So, logically enough, it makes sense for them to kind of partner up. Peacock had the advantage, one, because it was sort of the NBC-affiliated streaming platform, and again, NBC, WWE, they've had this working relationship with their affiliated you know, networks like USA Network, especially 
over the course of the past few decades and so on and so forth. It was only a more natural fit, plus Peacock has already been around a year. They already had some kind of infrastructure in place to sort of transition over to that. And quite honestly, like, at least according to Wikipedia, there are, as of the end of January, so there's probably going to be a little bit of an uptick, possibly, but... Peacock has over 33 million users, so that is a crap ton more eyes on the network and on the product through Peacock versus the WWE Network standalone more niche app. So, needless to say, it adds up. And again, like, I don't have that knowledge of what was actually said during those conversations or anything like that. Again, this is just, you know, my thought process and putting myself in maybe like a business decision sort of mindset, right? Because it's sort of like, it makes sense. You want more eyes on the product and, you know, you might as well milk out the deal however you can. I think it's what, like five years for like $1 billion or something crazy like that. And I know it's going to be frustrating for us fans for, you know, the first few months or so, but do we not remember how crazy the network was? Like when it first launched back around WrestleMania 30? Whoo! <laughs> But yeah, uh, this is the part where we are just going to dive right in and look at the user experience, you know, the major features of what's different, what's similar, and, you know, maybe some maybe some positives and negatives of both, because that's just how we roll around here. I'm more of a glass half full type of person. So yeah, again, this is where my peanut butter mixes in with the chocolate. So let's just, let's get right to it. All right, so I pulled up this image here just from a quick Google image search of basically the different tiers that you get with Peacock. For the WWE Network, like their free version of it will be in the free version of Peacock right here in this first tier. There, There's two different types of Peacock Premium, which I didn't actually realize until after I put in, you know, the $10 for the four months of limited ads. Right here, you get the limited ads version, very much like in the same artery as Hulu has, where you get... $4.99 a month for limited ads, so you get like a handful of ads per show, per episode, what have you, and then you have Peacock Premium Plus, where it includes all the premium stuff, everything, with no ads. There are annual plans, from what I was doing some digging into, where with if you do the limited ad route, you only pay 50 bucks for a full year, which is ridiculous but like not in a bad way, of course. And then of course you get the Peacock Premium Plus package here at the end annually for $99.99. This is what you get out of it, essentially. Again, this is the office, essentially, as an example, but the prices are still the same. And there's two annual plans. So you have five different options, technically, as to how you want to pay for Peacock. I think Peacock slightly has a little bit more of an advantage just because there's different options. And you know what? We like options here in 2021. Major difference numero uno. So we're on Peacock. There's a whole WWE section here. But if you want to watch anything live from the network, you've got to go to the channel section. And then there's like an actual list of channels. And again, this is on the desktop. This is not on a television. You go to the WWE network, you go to the homepage, it automatically sort of has it like loaded essentially or you know you can just click on watch now and look at the schedule and that sort of thing but as you can see with the navigation part of it it makes a lot more sense <laughs> so you have featured pay-per-views raw smackdown nxt in ring originals and watch now with peacock you just get wwe and then they break it down into originals featured series recently added, pay-per-view specials, but then this is where things get a bit interesting. So because it is indeed NBC's streaming platform, you're going to get certain things that NBC also has. So, you know, they have Young Rock over here. <laughs> They've got The Rundown. <laughs> They've got Fast Five. <laughs> They've got the Fast and the Furious movies and all sorts of other stuff. So yeah, uh, and then you've got WCW series and specials, WWE superstars, so I guess those are the, oh, their own playlists, women of WWE, the Attitude Era, the Road to WrestleMania, No Guts, No Glory, because Stone Cold said so. <laughs> okay, but those two headers actually kind of bleed into each other pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of a mess if you're trying to look for anything, like, specific, so... But yeah, they also have, of course, recently added, 
pay-per-view specials. So they've got all of them kind of clumped together. So say, for example, I'm trying to look up, I don't know, Royal Rumble. It just gives me this. 34 seasons. <laughs> this is this is going to bleed into the next point right here. They break everything down by seasons. I came across this, um, interestingly enough, with my... Originally, it was going to be NXT UK, but I wasn't sure if that was just for the TV series or for the pay-per-views or what was going on. Because seasons is a thing, like in television, but not for pay-per-views, at least for me anyway. That's how I mentally think about it. Like, I can see how they would section it off in seasons. Like, you go from, like, maybe, you know, Mania to Mania, and that's your season, right? Like, that makes sense to me. With season, like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and watch season 27 of the Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? It doesn't add up. You go to WWE pay-per-view... Filter by all shows. It gives you the list. Nice and neat and organized. I can respect that quite a bit. Go to Royal Rumble. It gives you all of them, but then you can go and do the breakdown by year rather than seasons. But yeah, they. <laughs> this also shows you the rollout of how things are going here in the States with Peacock. But the earliest episodes that we have are from After Mania 35. So yeah, over here, as you can see, we get season 15 of NXT, which, how? <laughs> and you compare that to, you know, NXT, and there's not even the takeovers tab, which I don't even know where those are at, to be completely honest. And then you break it down by the years, so you even get, like, the OG game show NXT over here, which is quite nice. Uh, not that I'm going to go back and watch those anytime soon, but it's nice to know that they're there, but you can break it down by year versus seasons. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah, so some more food for thought too. I actually had to look up where the takeovers were. So <laughs> you've got NXT TakeOver War Games. They're also in its own category as well. You have, you know, all these guys, right, right. And then you have Vengeance Day, which just aired. So essentially they've only really got... Wait, aren't they? They're missing a couple, aren't they? They're missing a couple from 2019 because War Games was November of 19. They went back to April 2019. So they're missing the World's Collide show, like the crossover with NXT, NXT UK. Okay, so in the bracket of stuff that we already sort of have, they haven't gotten to TakeOver 25, TakeOver Toronto. And those are the only two missing from that bracket. Because they've gotten everything from like After Mania 35 onward in terms of the weekly content so that's where that's coming from but this might be the part that you're looking for right what did fast lane look like on both peacock and on the network so right over here it gives us two hours and 44 minutes you might be wondering well christina that's the average runtime for a pay-per-view is it not you would be correct however <laughs> good old peacock gave us four hours four and then when you go to load it up on Peacock, it gives you three hours and 48 minutes. So it's like, there's an hour difference right there between the two. Which one is it? Which one? Come on. Or what I'm assuming happens is that they lumped in the pre-show with everything else, which appears to be the case right here. Yep, they did. Two hours and 44 minutes versus three hours and 48 minutes. Because they lumped in the pre-show with the rest of Fastlane. So, for those of us here in the States that didn't catch it the first time when it was live, we're going to have to go back and fast forward through like the first hour if we don't want to watch the pre-show stuff. And another big distinguishable thing, look at this. You get the little like matches at the bottom. Where are the matches anywhere? Like maybe this iCard thing? Nope. Where is it, Peacock? Where are the where are the mar where are the markers at? Now, you, say you fire up just your regular weekly event, just so that way we can get a little bit of diversity in terms of you know the content that we're showing and so forth. We're gonna go and check out the most recent episode of NXT UK, partially so I could walk you through as to why we were a little bit salty with the ads, to say the least. So before each of these loaded. And again, I didn't want to like go into the copyright and so forth. We had a 30 second ad before the Peacock version. And we only had a 15 second one for the network version. This one runs at 1 hour, 4 minutes and 55 seconds. 
and this one is one hour, five minutes, and 11 seconds. So not too much of a time discrepancy, but it's like you would think that the times would match up. Very nitpicky thing, I realize, but consistency is key. But one major difference that you'll probably recognize right away, other than like the seasons and stuff. Notice how there are no little dots here when you go to like click on random things. <laughs> Same, th not the same thing here. These are the delightful ad markers. <laughs> Look at how short of a time it took to get to this first one, okay? Like, we need to talk about this kind of crap here. We didn't even get to the intro sequence thing yet, like the intro package or anything like that. We just got, we had the hype package, went to an ad, and then went to something else. I don't remember what it was. It was a mess where the ads were placed for this. But there are five ads interwoven in this one hour of television, which makes sense because traditionally with media, you get for every one hour of television, it's usually roughly about 15 or so minutes of ads. <laughs> so just, you know, f some food for thought. <laughs> so either way, like, you know, the number of ads, it's fine. That sort of thing. Like, typically they're about 30 seconds or so each, which isn't too terrible. But the way that they're placed... <laughs> Two of them are right in the middle of matches in places where they shouldn't be, like it's not a natural ad break. One of them's two minutes and 15, 16 seconds into this thing. But you'll see right there, again, still no these guys right here. So this is sort of like, you click on one and it jumps right to the segment or the match. So as you can see, you click on the arrow, you get to the segments and all that stuff. So it breaks it down, which is quite nice. I'd like to see that get imported over to Peacock. And I think that's something that Peacock can learn from the network. But it's kind of clear that they need to possibly get some sort of, you know, input from, you know, the audience and so forth. Because, come on now, I'm not watching season four, episode 11 of NXT UK. <laughs> I'm watching a 2021 episode from March. Like, get it together, please. <laughs> I, I, I like how there's general things. I like the general meat and potatoes of it. But again, it's missing a few things that I think could better it. And it, again, this is what it looks like on a desktop slash my laptop. I have a 13-inch computer, so that's, you know, why I'm saying laptop. Um, so it's going to vary, of course, whether it's going to... <laughs> it's going to vary, all right. I mean, to be completely honest, like, this sort of, like, layout kind of reminds me more of the Hulu setup, so I'm assuming that they sort of, you know, took some tips and tricks from uh, good old Hulu. But yeah, pretty much the laptop and television version is, like, fairly similar, I would say, so just more blown up on a regular television, of course. But needless to say, y'all kind of get the idea as to where things are going at, right? So, again... We just wanted to use that as a quick example of just some of the major, major differences right there. So, there's that. Also, another major difference that I noticed is that they put replay in the corner for certain things like fast lane and the bump. And they didn't so much with the other one over on the uh, network version because you kind of assume it's already, like, there, right? Like, you assume it's already, like, it's done and over with. <laughs> that is pretty much, those are some of the main key differences or the price, the user experience. Uh, the layout, and the freaking ads. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this gives a little bit more insight, whether you're, you know, a super hardcore wrestling fan or a casual fan or not even a wrestling fan. Or, you know, you might be somebody that's, you know, international that might not be super familiar with what Peacock is and you're probably wondering what's going on over in the States. Well, uh, but hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight as to what Peacock is, what are the main differences between Peacock and the network, possible explanations other than the money, of course, <laughs> that WWE might have wanted to merge a little bit with their streaming services over to Peacock, and all sorts of good stuff. So hopefully, again, this was helpful, and, you know, maybe, you know, if you want more of these sort of deep dive sort of things... Uh, do indeed let me know because, you know, I enjoy doing some deep diving. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Leave a like, leave a comment, do all the fun stuff here on the channel. We're doing, I, I guess I can say we're doing weekly reaction videos for NXT and NXT UK at this point. Uh, and of course, we're doing some classic pay-per-view reactions as well. So anything you want me to react to, whether that's wrestling or non-wrestling related or non-gaming related as well, do indeed let me know. So, so on that note, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you all around later. Bye, everyone.